the business model of signing, not, not a songwriter, but someone who's both a songwriter and wants to be a recording artist, has always been established by the record companies, by the way, to sign people based on an album that they will make and how many songs of theirs will be in that album. And of course, at that point, the publishers also had to make those decisions and take those risks. Uh, in today's world, we know that physical album sales are declining very, very quickly. Um, on the other hand, the uh, sale and distribution of music over the internet is increasing, but it's increasing with singles. Uh, and so the, if, you, if you plotted a graph, uh, the point at which uh, the sales value of internet distributed merchandise would surpass physical goods is, is pretty far out there if the single model is what's going to be prevalent. Um, and that seems to be the case. So I ask everybody to think about, talk about what happens when a lawyer comes to you with a young person who made a deal with a record company uh, and gotten an album deal and gotten X hundred thousand dollars to make that deal and now is asking you to, to make a deal based on their album. I believe that you, you have to allocate a certain amount of money to the, what you would call the, the risk deals. You know, the new artists that you believe in um, and, and you, you want to nurture that artist, help them develop, and uh, they come to you and they have an album deal with a record company, but the record hasn't either been made or if it has been made, it hasn't been released. Um, my belief is that, uh, uh, that when you start talking about uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for payment for new, new artists, um, that you would be better off waiting to see if that artist had a hit. And then maybe have to pay significantly more, but the significantly more money that you pay is safer. Uh, because you, you are dealing in a, a, at this moment in time in a singles world, uh, and a singles world generates performances from either ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC. It generates digital downloads. Uh, it, uh, it, it, uh, it creates sync opportunities because someone wants to use that specific song. So I, I think that, uh, that, uh, that it, it really hasn't changed for me. I mean, that's always been my view, that, if, um, that w we shouldn't be in the risk business. Uh, yes, we, we should try to develop uh, new talent and nurture them, but at levels of cost that make economic sense to us. Once you get into a higher levels of expense, I think you would be better off waiting. I mean, for us, the perfect example is Sarah Bareilles. Um, came to us with, with what I thought was a, an incredibly great album and a great song called, you know, lo uh, Love Song, but it, it hadn't been released yet. And, and the, the value was uh, that, the, that they were asking was so expensive that if Love Song, you know, if I was the only one that believed that Love Song was a hit, um, we would be out of a lot of money. So we waited and wound up paying about four times more than what, it, what we originally could have done the deal for. But you know what? That, that money was, in my view, was safe. And, and uh, we have an artist that has a great future. And, and uh, so that's kind of the approach that you need to take, I think, in today's world. I mean, okay. I'm sure I'm not saying anything that these guys don't, don't also copy me with. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just, we just emulate many decades ago, we were a singles business, you know, the old 45s and all. It was driven by the song and the, uh, and the individual performance of that song, and that's, what, and, the, uh, uh, and that's what people were buying. We then moved into the era of the album, but I don't think we moved away from the, the value of the individual song to drive people to in, into the stores. People bought collections of songs, but they were largely motivated by 
the value of that individual composition, that one, that hit song that they heard on the radio or that their friends told them about. Uh, and here we are. We're transitioning back to where we used to be, which was with a dual market. Individual songs sold as, as or uh, exploited as individual op opportunities and those that are brought together. The difficulty for the, in an album, the difficulty as an economic model is that if you are investing, as we do, if you're investing uh, to, uh, as, as one of the, against the songs that are being just carried on the album and are not the driving songs that make people create the demand, then, then because album sales are declining at a, at a pretty rapid rate, your economics are going to go away. And that's exactly what's happening to the record industry. And the, uh, so, so our strategy is to invest in the song, in the songwriter, in, the, in that individual unique talent that is going to capture uh, a large audience. And so even though an album is not a perfect unit of measure for, for that economic value, it does, if you've, if you've if you've signed properly and you have and you and you've worked it properly, you will be able to be uh, financially successful, which is of course an important part of what we do, uh, because what comes along with that album is is one, two, three, maybe more singles that sell well on the uh, uh, on on iTunes that that generate uh, uh, revenue from ringtones and master tones, that create videos that are played and get uh, paid, pay per play uh, uh, opportunities, and so on. But it is about understanding that it just having a song on an album does not in and of itself create the sort of value that most people in this room would love to see. You have to write the song that's going to be played on the radio, that's going to be that single. And if you do, how the, how the deal is constructed uh, isn't, isn't important. It, it's about the overall economics of it all. So uh, that said, we are trying to move away from the album structure deals because I think the record industry is about to move away from it itself, that, the, that they will be releasing not full 12, 14 cut albums uh, on, on newer artists, that they will be releasing one and two track uh, packages and maybe four or five track packages, and mostly online. And so our deals have to reflect that reality. But uh, as I say, it, for us, it's all about backing the guy who, or gal who is actually writing the, that great song getting the attorney to understand the year 2009. I, I find that there's a, there's a, maybe a come on, more complicated mathematical exercise you have to go through than you might have uh, five, five or ten, 10 years ago. Uh, Marty mentioned earlier the, 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 the change in uh, uh, relative proportions of mechanical and performance revenue. Well, m mechanical revenue in an album world, the the hit song and the ones that hitched the ride had had the had the same value. There might be some variation if there were some singles that were only the 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 hit. But um, you know, if you published the the hitch the ride song, that was as good as as the other one. Where, where the where the difference shows up is is via ASCAP and the other performance rights organizations and what's played on the radio, what's heard on television, etc. Well, now that's the lion's share of the revenue. So it just it's that much more important that you uh, that you know that there's a single that you the, that you have the single, and so you know questions of you know do you have collaborators or do you do this on your own, and uh, you know reminding the lawyers that the uh, you know we've dropped at least a digit in the sales of compact discs around the world. You know there were you know a decade ago there were. There were individual albums that sold 20 million units around the world. Uh, those were fabulous for the record company. They were fabulous for publishing companies. You know, you know, drop at least a digit. 
And, and I, 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 don't, I don't find that uh, uh, the two, that every attorney the two are the zero. Right. <laughs> that uh, that I'm not sure every outside attorney is is thinking in 2009 terms. There's no question the models are changing and. Um, you know, a lot of it is driven by what the record labels are doing. We know that the record labels have started doing 360 deals, um, where they're trying to, you know, not just be in the record business, but, um, you know, and, and at Universal, as an example, Universal went out and bought a, um, a merchandise company. Um, they bought management companies. And, um, and so they're legitimately in those businesses. And when they sign new acts now, most acts are getting signed to 360 deals. And, um, and we've worked out an internal incentive scheme so that, um, so that publishing rights can be part of the equation and that we win and, and the label wins. Um, and, and even if we bring a merchandising deal to our merchandise company, we, we, we get a, a, a benefit from that. So, um, so those, that, that is changing. And I think as Roger said, uh, the, the album model is going to change. There's no question. Right. As sales continue to decline, the whole economic model of our industry is probably going to change. And I don't think we know what it's going to look like, but there's no question that in three to five years from now, I think it's going to be a very, very different model. And um, I've already had discussions at, uh, with our sister labels of, you know, how, what would you guys do if we only decided to put out an album, but it was a, a six track album? Um, you know, what if we decided that it's not an album, but it's just going to be a, a series of, um, you know, releases, you know, we're going to put out a couple of singles across, you know, the year and build awareness of our, our artists that way. Um, and, uh, and one thing that we're grappling with, of course, is, you know, as the rosters shrink and you've got now more artists that are not signed to majors, but they'll come back to you and they'll go, um, so listen, now we're going to be put out through the indie distribution division. Um, or it might be a digital release only. Um, and, you know, it just, we need to be flexible as an industry. Um, we're going to be forced, I think, into really thinking about these things very soon. Um, and I think, uh, and as Dave said, it's going to force everyone, including the attorneys, to really think differently about how we structure deals, what are the economics, what really makes sense. There's no question, though, that it's all coming.